Good Monday morning, everyone, here on Radio Maria. This is Christina King, and welcome to Embracing Your Greatness. I'm so glad that you've joined us today. Um, today, if you do have little ones, we might be discussing some things uh, that, that might give you some pause, although we don't get into dis descriptions of specifics. We will be talking today about healing the wounds of sexual abuse. Uh, so I just wanted to preface the program with that to let you know that if you would like to uh, put little listeners out of the room or turn this down or maybe just pop in your headset so you can listen to yourself, uh, I want you to feel that you have the opportunity to do that. Um, as you know, here on Embracing Your Greatness, this program is dedicated to reestablishing the dignity of the human person. And uh, the way I do that is helping people to see through the lens of theology of the body and, of course, Christ's mercy. Uh, what is broken in the world, the spiritual leprosy that we're dealing with and so we look at kind of things that everybody's dealing with in the world or maybe even cultural events that are going on but I look to the Holy Father's intentions for every month to give me the programming this month June 2012 the general intention of our Holy Father is Christ present in the Eucharist that believers may recognize in the Eucharist the living presence of the risen one who accompanies them in daily life the missionary intention of our Holy Father is for European Christians that Christians in Europe may rediscover their true identity and participate with greater enthusiasm in the proclamation of the gospel. For today's program, we're going to be focusing on the Holy Father's general intention, which is Christ, present in the Eucharist. Now, my guest today, Kristalina Everett, has started a new website called Women Made New, dealing with helping to bring healing to those who have suffered from the wounds of sexual abuse. She has a unique aspect on it, and you can see that if you go to her website, which of course is womenmadenew.com, so that's www.womenmadenew.com, and you will see this beautiful icon of what looks like a monstrance with the radiating rays of mercy coming out of it. As I listened to her this uh, a couple weeks ago when I, when I met her for the first time at EWTN on Johnette Bankovitz's program, Women of Grace, I listened as she talked about the transformative powers of the Eucharist, a very unique perspective in bringing healing to something that two out of every three women are dealing with, which are the wounds of sexual abuse. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce my guest, Christina Everett. Good morning. Good morning, Christina. Thank you for having me on your show. Oh, it's it's really my honor and privilege, the fact that I'm speaking to someone who has used is using all your gifts, your talents, and your resources to bring God's merciful healing to the world in such a profound and unique way. Um, and you've had quite a, a journey yourself to get to this place. If, if you wouldn't mind, just because, uh, as I've told you before, I have a YouTube audience as well um, as Radio Maria audience, and some people might not who, know who you are. Could you give me a quick background on, on who you are and how you got uh, a little bit into doing ministry? Is this something you've been doing your whole life? Uh, it's something that I actually started probably in my early 20s, maybe about 19. I got really passionate about chastity and abstinence and purity because um, within my high school years, I was very promiscuous and I was a typical party girl and a people pleaser, and I really created a lot of wounds for myself. But the problem was that once you lose your virginity and you aren't grounded in your faith, you really think, well, this is that, this is, this is that for me. I mean, once it's done, it's done, and once it's gone. But I had a massive conversion in my life at the age of 18, and I realized that it's never too late to start over. It doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done in your life, that you can start over, and Jesus' grace and mercy is there waiting for you. And because I had this realization, I wanted to scream from the rooftops. All the young women and even my girlfriends, how I saw they just suffered and they caused their own suffering, just to let them know that it's never too late because I never heard that message before that you can start over even if you've made past mistakes. And so because of that, I wanted to get into abstinence and chastity and I, I volunteered at crisis pregnancy centers. I gave a year on a missions trip because I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, but I know I wanted to do it for God. Mm -hmm. And in that time, I actually met Jason, um, who was my husband, at a chastity conference in the Bahamas, of all places. <laughs> and he was the speaker there, and we just hit it off, and we became friends for a year, and slowly I started speaking with him. They gave my testimony, and I never really wanted to be a speaker, but it just seemed like that's what God was calling me to because the impact of my testimony um, really seemed to help people, 
And so Sloan to Dupont Hood, the chastity ministry, and I joined Jason's chastity ministry at Catholic Amherst. And since then, it's been about, probably about 12 years now, that I've been speaking on abstinence, chastity, not just um, nationally, but internationally, all over the world. And we've written a couple books on it um, to help young people. And so far, so good. It's been amazing. God's grace and mercy has definitely helped people. So because of that, um, in my mass conversion, I actually had a second conversion in my life. Because once I got married, a couple years into my marriage, and becoming a mother, a lot of problems started surfacing within myself that I didn't really understand. And my own brokenness started affecting my marriage. Can you give examples to me? Like, what were um, some of the things that kind of made you say, okay, what's going on here? Um, I think it was hard for me to be very affectionate. And I didn't like Jason just hugging me or touching me. And it, it was just hard for me to receive affection and to give love sometimes. And I, I didn't understand why this was happening to me. Mm. And even within my own children, it it was just hard to give them that affection that a mother typically does give them, and I couldn't understand why. And um, as the time went on, it, it just got harder for me, and I just got more frustrated, I got more angry, and I had no idea what was going on. I never had to deal with this before. And so it's, it's really beautiful how God set it up for me that within the safety of my own marriage and in my own home, mm. I was able to realize certain things that were happening to me. Mm. So through a lot of prayer and hours of adoration, God was telling me, well, you need to get help. You need to go to counseling. And at first that was a very humbling thing because who wants to go to counseling? You know, people have <laughs> a really bad connotation over counseling and getting help these days because then that means you have a problem. And it was a humbling thing, but then I realized so that's what I need to do. And so I went to counseling, and it's been about a three-year process in, in this healing journey that God has had me on. And through that and through the safety of being within the, the counseling sessions that I did do, I realized some things that happened to me, things that were done to me, and um, things that I actually volunteered for within high school, but there was a lot of brokenness and woundedness and hurt there that when I had this massive conversion, I failed to overlook. And I just come, kind of ignored it, and I really just kind of stuffed it, and I didn't want to face it. But it was time, and God was telling me it was time. And I think why my healing process has been so successful, because in my eyes it took three things for me to heal through, through these things. And one of them was adoration, a lot of adoration. It was a good Catholic counselor and therapist. And then it was my wonderful priest that helped me. And... With those three things, um, God has really put me on this journey of healing and strengthening me and becoming that whole woman of God that he needs me to be because I realize there's no shame in going to counseling. There's no shame in being healed. Right. And I think that's the lie of the devil, that he wants you to be ashamed. He wants you to live under that cloud of shame and okay. embarrassment and wanting to heal yourself because that's where he has the power, I realize. That's right. where he has the power in my life is, is is in that brokenness. But if you mm. heal that brokenness, he has no power. He has no stronghold. And right. the devil cannot follow you into the light. Well, you will not. You can't there, stand it. There's a so few things. Sorry. Sorry, there's a little delay here. So I, there's a few things here that I want to back up on because you've given sure. you've, you've given several areas that I think need clarification for people that, that might be like on board with what we're saying here and, and might want a few more details here. Sure. Um, and and one of the things was um, the affection. I want to give clarification to this because there's a lot of women out there that uh, that I think are dealing with this. A lot of husbands maybe, maybe women that don't even realize it's a problem. Maybe the husbands are. We're not talking about frigidity. We're not talking about the kind of affection yeah. where you know, you, you're just not wanting as, as much marital I intimacy as, as your husband would like. We're talking non-sexual physical displays of affection, yes, of of, uh, maybe children yeah. that want to constantly sit on your lap and touch your face or or ki constantly kissing your cheeks or maybe your husband that wants to just come and and rub your back while you're r r running dishes I am I right in that when you're saying that the the affection the physical displays of affection were difficult yes and to a certain extent yes for me that was true and for other women I found it's been very difficult for them for them to just 
just be able to hug their children, or and even after they hit a certain age, it's hard for them to yes. give affection to their children. It's funny and, that you say you that. Know, yeah, that like yes, seven or eight that, years that's old. That's finding right. in a lot of women that are, that are coming out with all of these things that have happened to them that it's really hard for them, and I think they feel kind of inadequate as a mother 